system. So we are keep going uh, on the fourth bedrock. So if you open the link of uh, Wikipedia, five thousand. <coughs> to 651 was the fourth time Buddhist Hijrak uh, following the Jen Zhi Sun Tan. So we, we started the third Hijrak Sun Tan yesterday, right? So, and preceding Hong Ren, the fifth. Hong Ren is the teacher of Hui Nan, the sixth. So, Maybe next time we will study Hong the, the fifth. And Arisa mentioned Tao Xing is the further biography of animal monks. She calls them as well. Uh, anyway, I, you can keep reading. It's not so important here. So we will go on biography. He was born in Yongming County, or Hubei province, middle of China. <clears throat> so he began studying Buddhism at the age of seven. That's quite young. And uh, quite young. So that's at the, before seven, he started a lot of classical, like uh, Confucian, Taoism books already. He was very smart. Uh, he started, he began to study like um, classical Chinese Confucian Taoism, Lao Zhuang, we call it Lao Zhuang, at the age of four. So at the age of seven, after three years of studying Chinese, uh, you know, culture, he began studying Buddhism. That's really... And the following is our... our uh, Topic today: How he got enlightened. So, Dao Xing met Sun Chan. I, I think I thought a year at age of fourteen, when he was only yeah fourteen years old. The following exchange took place. Dao Xing asked, "I ask for Master's compassion. Please instruct me on how to achieve release." Achieve release, he wants to seek um, liberation. And Sun Chan, the third patriarch said, Is there someone who constrains you or binds you? Dao Xin answered, There's no such person. Sun Chan asked, uh, answered, Why then seek release when you are constrained by no one? Very interesting, right? So I will try to read the Chinese version. So Dao Xing asked Sun Chan, Yuan He Shang Ci Bei Qi Yu Jie Tuo Fa Men. So the, the translation is very uh, accurate. I ask for master's compassion. Please instruct me on how to, you know, liberate. Then San Zhu or the, the Sun Chan said, Sui Fu Lu. Is there anyone who constrain you or bind you? And Dao Xing answered, Wu Ren Fu. There's no such person. <laughs> so it's a, it's a traditional phrases, kind of um, old style. So translation, why then seek release when you are constrained by no one?
It's better now or is my problem? Is it is my sound is better now? Okay, so I think you missed uh, the most important part. We'll go, you know, review again. So if you go a little bit uh, biography in the middle, there's a, uh, you know, Dao Xing met Sun Chang when he was only 14 years old. And before seven, he started, before seven years old, he was, he studied a lot of classical Chinese, like a Confucian, Ism and the Taoism. So it's a really good marriage. Then he followed um, Buddha's teaching of Buddhism when he was four, uh, seven. You see, then at, at the 14 years old, the following exchange took place. Tao Xin said, I ask for master's compassion. Please instruct me on how to achieve release or liberation. And Sun the third patriarch, asks, is there someone who constrains you? There's no such person, Daoxin answered. Then the master said, why then seek release when you are constrained by no one? So the Chinese version, I repeat again. Yuan He Shang Zi Bei Qi Yu Jie Tuo Fa Men. <laughs> so it's old, old style of Chinese and uh, you see from the first page up to second, second to third, third to the fourth, all the teachers point directly point to something that is unreal and ask the disciples or students to look the nature of the suffering no matter it's a sickness it's a anxious mind or here is the looking for the liberation or the bondage The key point is here. So, no matter is the first, uh, is the second, third, or fourth page up. They asked liberation, or released anxious mind, or healing from the sickness. The master always pointing to the part who is asking why you can the sense of I amness actually like now who is listening who is listening is prior to what is listened Or what is asked? Who is asking? Who is listening? Who is seeking the liberation? Who is seeking the healing of sickness? That part. Should be. Realized. So the sense of I am-ness or I am should be there first. That's the uh, Chan teaching.
as a lineage. Your mind is Buddha. Again, your mind is not the contents of the mind, but the pure mind, pure awareness or consciousness prior to the contents of the awareness. Let's say prior. Again, analogy of reflection, uh, the mirror and its reflections. No mirror, no reflection. Make sense? The principal function of a mirror is to reflect. In the same way, the principal function of awareness is to be aware, to know. That's the Chan teaching. You know you're listening, that awareness should be understood or reconnect, reconnected or realized instead of, you know, focus on the content of the mirror or the contents of the awareness. There's kind of the, the, the awareness is joined back, is go inwardly. That's whole Tan teaching. No matter you're listening, you're asking, you're seeking what? Maybe you're seeking for, you know, happiness or seeking wealth, you're seeking, you know, you're seeking, uh, seeking for, uh, you know, a job. The seeker, the doer, should be realized. Now again, who is the listener? Instead of what you have listened, what I'm speaking to you is the contents of our awareness. Every word I say to you, I'm, I'm speaking now, are reflections of your four dimensional conscious mirror. Every word I say, even to myself, are my reflections in my consciousness, in my awareness. If you do realize this, You are living in a Dharma realm. Again, Fa Jie. That's the difference between a Buddha or Bodhisattva and the worldly person. A worldly person living in the in the world realm, let's say the material world. This is me and this is others. There's a separation between the awareness and the contents of the uh, awareness. Let's say that first. So it's really, uh, um, how do you say, subtle. For the worldly view, this is me and everything else that is not me. There's, they have a separation or they never have that union between subject, the, the awareness and the contents of the awareness. You are a four dimensional conscious mirror. If every reflection, every like the person, the tree, the room, the computer, the cell phone, your body sensation are the contents, are the reflections, your four-dimensional awareness. Then the reflections 
or the mirror itself. It happens in it manifests in the mirror. It it uh, emerges or appears in the mirror. Disappear in the mirror. Any contents, you know, people, your family, your job, everything appears in your awareness, disappears in your awareness, arise and fall comes and goes every minute, every second, every nanosecond. It comes and goes. It's like a constantly flowing river. The whole reality, the whole phenomenal world is, is, is like a river, constantly following, moving, you know, changing. But who is experiencing like now? Okay, it's now and now. Who is experiencing that thing? Never change the awareness, but the mirror itself doesn't move. That it comes or goes, while the contents or reflections, the contents of the awareness or the reflections of the mirror, comes and goes or come and go, appear and disappear. If you really feel it, your body sensation changes. Moment to moment, the sound is feeling, you know, you know, I know it's maybe the gradient is, is very slow, but it's in 24 hours we have day and night, right? Meaning that in every second it's changing, but our maybe our eyes cannot see it, but at least it can. Feel your body, the body sensations, energy flow moves in every second. And your mental activity changes, moves, comes and goes. It's beside all these movements, changements, you know, appearing and disappearing, there's something never changed. So all the Buddha's teaching is pointing to that never changing part, which is formless. Shei Fu Lu, who binds you, who constrains you? If the contents of the awareness or the reflections of the mirror always change and moving. You cannot grasp it. You cannot define it, actually. You, do, you cannot define its location. <laughs> and everything is connected to other things, in, into being, as a Thich Nhat Hanh said. But the thing is, uh, again, there's no confliction between the never changing and ever changing. There's no confliction. The mirror and the reflections coexist. Can you experience it now? That's important. All my words are pointing to your realization.
Just one sec. I need uh, my anger is hot. Just give me a sec. So we'll keep going, going on a little bit. Uh, da yi dao xing. So let's review the, the enlightenment, uh, you know, exchange again. Dao Xing said, I ask for the master's compassion. Please instruct me on how to achieve release or liberation. And Sun Zan said, is there any, someone who constrains you? Dao Xing said, there's no such person. If you look, if uh, we look into the nature of the mind, the contents of the mind is changing, is transient, is fleeting, it's unreal, it's empty. Then Sun Sun said, why then seek liberation or release when you are constrained by no one? So in the, there's another uh, analogy. It's the snake. The snake in the room. So, the old traditional analogy is: there's a, there's a man in the room. He perceived a rope, but it, he didn't know it's a rope, and he imagined it's a snake. He was frightened. He was scared. But eventually, he know. He know he knew it's a it's just a rope. Looks like a snake, and instantly, all his fear, you know, gone, went away. In the same way, all the phenomenal world is snake. <laughs> you see, or can you get my, you know, my point in now? Look around and look inside. It seems so real, the phenomenal world, but it's only real relative. If you are seeking for the ultimate, the ultimate liberation, then you need to go higher or deeper. Comparing to the ultimate, all the phenomenal world is unreal, all unreal. It's just like a, a rope in the room. And it's, it's a force, it's a fake snake that scared you, frightened you. This principle, number one, should be established. 
at least becomes your literary understanding, let's say knowledge. Then you have to use this knowledge applied into your every, everyday life. Always back to the sense of I amness. Right in the phenomenal world, what, no matter what situation it is, when you are in the family in the room, when you are with your family in the room, when you are in the market shopping, when you are driving on the road, when you're talking to somebody, when you're listening to some YouTube channel, <laughs> Who are you? Who is listening? Who is driving? Who is talking? Who is cooking? Who is walking? That thing should be realized. The awareness behind every doing should be realized. The non-doing behind every doing should be realized. And finally, you realize there's no conflict between doing and non-doing. It's one thing, just two sides of one coin. And you joyful, every experience becomes joyful for you. You have more understanding It's, it's so beautiful. Uh, let's say, the, let's, let's still study a little bit. I want to show you something which is in, important here. Uh, just if you go a little bit forward, uh, downward, um, Dao Xing eventually settled at East Mountain. So, Again, I thought I, I said yesterday before Dao Xing, all the patriarchs like um, Bodhidharma, like uh, Hui Ke, like uh, uh, Sun Chan, they travel. They don't have a fixed temple, a platform to to teach. After Dao Xing, he settled at Eastern Mountain. That's why we have an Eastern Mountain School later, uh, followed by Hong Ren. Hui Neng, uh, right? Shen uh, Xiu. So, so he started at Twin Peaks or Shuangfeng. He taught Chan Buddhism for thirty years in a sixth, in a you know location, uh, Eastern Mountain Temple. He has five hundred lay people and monks. You see, and the Taizong the the emperor, the second emperor, actually, the second emperor of the Tang Dynasty, Tai Zong, very famous one, you can go study it, um, invited Dao Xing to capital city, but Dao Xing refused three times. <laughs> and even the, how to say, the, the, the emissary, emissary, Related the instruction to Dao Xing, you know, if you don't, if you don't agree to come back with me to the capital, uh, your head will be chopped off. Dao Xing exposed and stretched out his neck to <laughs> allow to chop uh, off his head. The envoy was shocked, <laughs> and he was honored. Very interesting, yeah. Let's go to the teachings. You see Dao Xing uh, to settle at one spot for an extended period of time, develop, developing a stable community life which could lead to monastic uh, community throughout uh, China.
and before before Daoxing, the, the, the patriarchs like begging. <laughs> So he always, he also began to, you know, instruct the disciples to do the agriculture, like um, plant some veggies for themselves to survive. So they have nong chan bing zhong. So while you practice the meditation or spiritual techniques, you are also uh, like plant veggies or raise the chickens to feed themselves. It's like an agriculture and meditation at the same time. So it's uh, it's followed by, it's all because of the Dao Xing. If you go a little bit uh, at the end of this page, there's one sentence here. The expression Samadhi of one practice. Yi Xing San Mei. So that's the high, how to say, I would say it's the highest realization. For most people, even for myself, I, 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 for the first initial some couple of years, like five years, I meditate, I started sutras, I meditate until, so meditation again is try to calm the mind to, to some level, stillness. Then you can focus on anything you're doing, like cooking, like reading, like, uh, you know, driving, like uh, everything, like play, play, play a piano or guitar or anything. So meditation is try to focus the mind, to calm the mind. Then once our mind is calm enough and can be focused, something will happen. Especially if you follow some, you know, uh, traditional or sages masters teachings, like like Buddhism. So, sitting meditation. Basically, what we call meditation is a sitting pose, right? Sitting meditation brings you teaches you how to how you can calm, calm your mind and become focused. Right? Make sense? So while you're physically stable, you can focus and concentrate and calm the mind. Actually it does not necessary it means you have to sit. You can walk, you can eat, you can sleep, you can so why do you have years of training and meditation to come to focus? You may reach a level that no matter what you're doing, if you are doing some things, you can focus on it. If you are not doing some things, the awareness is there. Actually, no matter if you are doing or not doing, the pure awareness is always there as the background. So that's what it means you are in a meditative state, no matter you're doing or not doing, no matter you're sleeping, driving, biking, hiking, you know, or not hiking or not doing anything, like now. You can you can rest in the pure awareness, no matter you're doing or not doing. That's called samadhi of one practice. Yi xing san mei. That's the Tao Xing's teaching. So that's a, that's a quote from the masters, from a master. 
Walking is meditation. Zuoichan. Sitting is meditation. You are sitting or you're not sitting, you're moving or you're not moving, you always have that ease of the mind, relaxation of the body. You are in the study of one practice. You're always entire ocean in one top. There's a gentleman asking ask me the a question which is not related to the to the meditation or this school, so I will ignore this. And Kirsten is asking which school of meditation do you encourage engaging or it is multiple? Uh, I would say mostly Chan, but uh, it always you know each row leads to row. Uh, you, so for everybody is different. You just find some some technique that uh, are suitable for you, that you feel comfortable. Then you can go on. Until one day you will see, actually every technique is same. Every technique as brings you to a final station, a final destination. Like every rose leads to Rome. It, it, um, it is not, not necessary which technique uh, you should do or should, you should not do. It's just um, find some technique that you can calm your mind, you can focus, and read some, uh, you know, books that, uh, how to say, there's a, um, to tell the truth, to tell the ultimate truth. Samadhi of one practice. That's the, that's the thing. That's the yi xing san mei. was the heart of Tao Xing's practice. Buddha is the mind. Outside the mind, there's no Buddha. And there's a one thing is I, I want to share that Maybe for the beginners who heard about this, Buddha is the mind. Outside the mind, there's no Buddha. It was very shocking for them. It was unacceptable because it's so new or so fresh. So that's, but if you can like uh, keep on going and uh, repeat it, this, repeat this kind of uh, teaching or wisdom, again again to the conscious mind then someday you will 
accept it and you will believe it and from your belief from the believing you can practice on it so every then every practice may become more meaningful or helpful of that so there's different four steps of awakening first you have to believe it make sense if you have doubt then that doubt will obstruct you if you really true truly believe it then you mo you may how to say follow xing jie or understand more xing jie xing zheng and practice more and realize more Repetition is a key here. Repetition in terms of belief, in terms of understanding, in terms of practice, and the realization. Until one day, no effort is needed. See the one is through all the technique. Yes, so Again, you, you can always visualize. Visualization helps too. So you can visualize your conscious mirror, four dimensional, all the things outside and inside, what you can see, hear, listen, you know, touch, taste, smell, and think. Well, all the contents, all the reflections of this four dimensional mirror. You can visualize that. You are a conscious mirror now. If you visualize this visualization again and again and again, you may have that taste more and more and more, and you will practice more and more and more. You have, you have understanding more and more and more, and eventually it becomes your realization, a complete, total, unbiased, realization oneness the mind is the buddha if it's this is too much for you you can go to focus on your mind first like focus on your brief you can review uh review my uh, Go back to my uh, one point concentration or the meditation techniques. To calm the mind, to focus the mind until something emerges. It's always it's, it's, it does not emerge, it does not come and go, you see? It does not come and go. Something never emerge that's the ultimate it's all inclusive it's in all it includes includes space and time so it's not appear in a space or appear in a, disappear in a space or appear in a time or disappear in time no there's something beyond space time that's you You may ask, what happened in, in the deep sleep without dream? Where am I? <laughs> I don't have a awareness. I don't have a dream because it's a, a dreamless sleep, right? 
I have no experience. If you can ask that, then you may ponder uh, who am I more? So, Maybe next time we'll talk about the Dongshan School because it's the mountain school, it is the mountain teaching, or you can preview first. Uh, the teachings is in this stage teachings, there's East Mountain teachings, so we all study later. The keyword for this Tao Xing, the Master Tao Xing, the fourth patriarch, is practice. The samadhi of one practice, yi xing san me. And the Buddha is the mind, outside the mind, there's no Buddha. <laughs> okay, if no questions, no more questions, let's end the session in silence. Show our gratitude, appreciation for all the master teachings. Thank you. Bye.